This is an educational fitting protocol video for eye care professionals. iArt Laboratories is an innovative company, supplying unique products. The main departments are, precision contact lenses, low vision aids, ocular prosthetics and training, relevant to the products designed and produced. Explains the handling and fitting process of Delta Connors and Delta Connors 6 lenses. These special soft lenses are dedicated to blend the irregular corneal astigmatism and improve the visual performance and in the same time reduce chair time for the patient. Delta Connors design is unique in stabilization, incorporating a prismodynamic system, slim edge profile, large optical zone diameters, offering an ideal solution for Corrado Connors, post grafted or irregular corneas. Delta Connors have a diameter of 14.5 mm and base curves from 8.2 to 9.6 mm, in 0.1 steps. Sphere correction range, is between minus 30 to plus 20 dioptres, cylinder correction up to minus 12 dioptres, in 0.25 steps, and axis in 1 degree steps. Standard materials are, GM Advance with 49%, water content and definitive silicone hydrogel with DK of 60 and modulus of 0.39. More details on Delta Connors and Delta Connors 6 lenses can be downloaded from www.iart.org. Additional parameters or material options are also available on request. The basic fitting set consists of three lenses of 14.5 mm of diameter. The three lenses have base curves of 8.3, 8.5 and 8.7 mm. The medium base curve is largely used for the majority of the cases. The power of the trial lenses is Plano, incorporating the prismodynamic system of stabilization and a 6 o'clock marking for the rotation, position evaluation. Delta Connors are easy to fit lenses, with the choice of fitting parameters taking only 5 minutes of chair time. The rest 10 minutes of chair time, needed to order the final lens, are dedicated to a careful refraction, using some useful tips explained below. Let's see how Delta Connors looks like. As you notice the handling, is identical with a normal lathe cut, soft toric lens, with some extra volume. The lens insertion is performed with the usual way, with patient's head leaning forward, to avoid lens drop while reaching the eye. Lens removal is done in two ways, dislocating the lens from the cornea and then bending it, taking the lens away from the eye. The second method is done by bending the lens, using the eyelid borders. Let's remind us a couple of simple points, that are essential in evaluating the base curve selection. Always start with 8.5mm base curve lens, in initial or moderate deformed corneas. Using the Delta Connors design, experience will guide the fitter to start with the steeper or flatter lens, depending on the case. Fit the lens and evaluate its movement and centration, using the push-up method. Attention though, performing the push-up, to observe the movement, without the interference of the upper eyelid. Therefore, hold the upper lid open, avoiding it to touch the lens. Upper lid position and tension could easily distort fitter's opinion on the judgment of a steep or a flat lens. Evaluate the lens behavior within the first 5 minutes, or as soon as possible patient's tearing is over. Change the trial lens, if you believe that a steeper or flatter lens is needed and re-evaluate in 5 minutes. When the base curve is chosen, leave the patient to walk away with the lens on, for half to one hour, to let the lens settled. A fitting tip that could mean that the lens is slightly flat, is done by observing the 6 o'clock marking while the patient is looking upward and blinks. Having fitted a flat lens, the lens 6 o'clock marking, independently on the position, will might not be stable while blinking and thus change position. In this case the fitter has to decide to try or order the final lens 0.1 or 0.2 mm steeper than the one tried. The Delta Connors lenses have an engraved line at 6 o'clock position. Since position of the marking depends on corneal shape, position and tension of eyelids, lenses might be stabilized at a different than the usual position. This possible rotated position has to be noted in order to be calculated with the over-refraction to achieve optimal correction with the final lens. 
rotation tip. The slit lamp microscope is positioned straight in front of patient's eye. The illumination is placed on the same line with the microscope. The light beam has to be as thin as possible, with the axis of the illumination at 90 degrees. The fitter finds the engraved line on the lens, places the illumination on the line. If the lens is rotated, the fitter rotates the axis of the illumination to bring it parallel or on the engraved marking of the lens. The fitter takes note of the rotation, subtracting 90 degrees, in absolute value, from the new illumination axis position, stating if the line has moved right or left, or clockwise or anti-clockwise. For example, the lens marking is stabilized 100 degrees. The fitter takes note of 10 degrees, 100 minus 90 equals 10, of rotation left or clockwise. Optical performance and over-refraction with Delta Connors design. Having fitted a trial lens over a cornea with a regular astigmatism, the fitter can immediately appreciate the corneal blending result, with various subjective, ficometric as well as objective methods. Retinoscopy will reveal more uniform shadows. Wavefront apparometers will manage to capture more spots centering the eye and give more realistic results. When corneal topography is performed over the lens worn, the corneal blending, with reduced or minimized corneal irregularity, will be evident. Over-refraction with the diagnostic lens on, can be started using the data from retinoscopy or auto-refractometry. Retinoscopy is strongly recommended, as automatic instruments regularly obtain wrong results, due to their calibration and optical design, which is done for relatively regular astigmatisms. Place the sphere and cylinder found on the foropter or trial frame. Performs objective refraction as usual, avoiding over minus prescriptions. Axis determination tip is an alternative method to find the axis, often useful to aberrated eyes. Show the patient letters or numbers, containing circular parts of 0, 8, 6, G, O, C of decimal acuity that can be distinguished easily. Tell the patient to refer when the target is starting get more blurred. Start moving the axis away from the one found with the normal subjective refraction, in both directions. The final axis will be the half of the two more blurred axis positions. For example, the refraction has an axis of 70 degrees. The fitter starts increasing the axis and the patient refers the increase of the blurring at 120 degrees. The fitter takes note of this and starts moving the axis backwards. The patient notices the visual improvement first and then refers the blurring again at 40 degrees. Therefore the new axis will be 120 plus 40 equals 160 divided 2 equals 80. The axis of the over-refraction will be 80 degrees. Cylinder power determination tip. Using as target again, circular figures, as before, the fitter asks the patient to report if he notices worsening or improvement. The fitter shows two positions every time. Firstly reducing the cylinder power by 0.75 or 1 diopter steps. If reducing the cylinder worsens the visual acuity, the fitter repeats with increasing cylinder power, always using steps at 0.75 to 1 diopter. For example, the refraction has a cylinder power of 4 diopters. The fitter starts by asking in which of the two positions the target is clearer or with less shadows, position 1, with cylinder of 4 or position 2 with cylinder of 3.25. If the reduced cylinder is improving vision, the fitter repeats with further cylinder reduction. If not, shows two positions with increased cylinder. Point spread function is a well-known expression of the visual performance, used in most wavefront apparometers, expressing how a point light source is diffused in the eye. In eye art laboratories, we have adopted a subjective refraction step, based on point spread function, to improve visual performance with Delta Connors lenses. The patient is shown with a light spot, in low illumination environment, present in every visual acuity projector. The fitter, asks the patient to report, when shadows or double images are changing during the testing. The procedure can be composed of two steps for the determination of axis and cylinder power. The sequence of the test is identical as for the axis and cylinder power determination tip, described before. When PSF for cylinder power is examined, 
The fitter reduces and increases the cylinder power in 0.75 or 1 diopter steps, having the patient reporting when the light spot appears with less, shadows or double images. If the cylinder power is different from the one found with the cylinder power determination tip, the visual acuity is checked and the fitter decides the best cylinder, suiting patients overall visual performance. Some airing the points that are useful for the fitting process of Delta Connors lenses, the fitter preferably has to take note of the diagnostic lens used, check it with the push up and upward gaze method. As far as the refraction concerns, rotation of diagnostic lens, over refraction with the conventional procedure, axis and cylinder power determination tip, and PSF tip, are advised to be followed and noted. Having these data, the fitter can decide with more ease and confidence, the best over lens prescription. Lens order of Delta Connors lenses. For the lens order the fitter has to provide the following, lens model, Delta Connors or Delta Connors 6, number of lenses, base curve, either of the lens tried, or even a base curve with smaller increments. For example, lens tried 8.5, and lens ordered 8.4 mm. Over refraction, performed with a diagnostic lens on, decided with the aid of the extra tests described before. Rotation of trial lens used. For example, Delta Connors 6, 2 lenses, base curve, 8.5 mm. Over refraction minus 3, minus 5 axis 80. Rotation 10 left or clockwise. If the eye care professional needs extra parameters, our consultants can help to the final lens parameters.